Good morning everyone. So this time we are going to talk about the Bayat of Omar Khayyam. But before that, I just want to share to you the content of this presentation. So we have the background of the work, the author's background, the reading of the poem, the dramatic situation, the mood of the poem, what does every stanza convey, the denotation and connotation, symbolism, figures of speech, the theme, and the implication of the title. So first we are going to talk about the background of the work. So, the Rubaiyat is a collection of four line stanzas. Originally, it was written by Omar Khayyam, a Persian poet, but later it was translated by Edward Fitzgerald into English. It is translated version of Fitzgerald established in five editions that make the Rubaiyat widely known in the world of literature, especially in English literature. So, this study deals with the 1859 first edition. The Rubaiyat is the exposition of Khayyam's contemplation of life and divinity, which is highly appreciated and of a great importance in the world of literature and a stepping progress to spirituality. So, the author's background. The Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam is the work of two authors, Omar Khayyam, and Edward Fitzgerald. Kayam wrote quatrains in his native Iranian language. The Rubaiyat is the work of Omar Kayam and translated into English and adapted by Edward Fitzgerald. Kayam was a Persian polymath, mathematician, philosopher, astronomer, physician, and a poet from Nishapur in modern day Iran. The author of the disease on mechanics, geography, and music. Kayam was one of the major mathematicians and astronomers of the medieval period. So next is the reading of the poem. Awake from morning in the bowl of night has flung the stone that puts the stars to flight, and lo, the hunter of the east is caught, the salt and store it in a noose of light. Dreaming with the dawn's left hand was in the sky, I hear the voice within the tavern cry, Awake, my little ones, and fill the cup, before life's liquor in its cup be dry. And as the cock crew, those who stood before, the tavern shouted, Open then the door, you know how little while we have to stay, and once departed, may return no more. Now, the new year, reviving all desires, the thoughtful soul to solitude retires, where the white hand of Moses and the bull puts out and Jesus from the ground suspires. Iram indeed is gone with all its rose, and Jam shed severing the cup where no one knows, but still the vine her ancient ruby yields, and still a garden by the water blows. And David's lips are locked, but in divine. High piping palavid with wine, 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 the red wine. The nightingale cries to the rose, that yellow cheek of hers to incarnate. Come, fill the cup, and in the fire of spring, the winter garment of the repentance fling. The bird of time has but a little way to fly, and lo, the bird is on the wing. And look! A thousand blossoms with the day, woke and a thousand scattered into clay, and his first summer month that brings the rose shall take Jamshed in Kaikabad away. But come with old Kayam and leave a lot of Kaikabad in Kaikosheru forgot. Let Rustam lay about him as he will, or hide him tie, cry, supper him, them not. With me along some strip of herbage strewn, that just divides the desert from the zone, where name of slave and sultan scarce is known, and pity sultan, Mahmud in her, on his throne. Here with a loaf of bread beneath the boo, 
a flask of wine, a book of verse, and though, beside me singing in the wilderness, and the wilderness is paradise, you know. How sweet is mortal sovereignty, think some others, how blessed the paradise to come. Ah, take the cash in hand and wave the rest. Oh, the brave music of a distant jam. Look at the rose that blows about us. Lo, laughing she says into the world I blow. At once the silken tassel of my purse, tear and its treasure on the garden throw. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon, turns ashes or it prospires, and anon like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lighting a little hour or two is gone. And those who has been dead the golden grain, and those who flung it to the winds like rain, alike to know such are at earth are turned as buried ones men won't dug up again. Think in this bettered caravansary, whose doorways are alternate night and day, how sultan after sultan with his pomp abode his hour or two and went his away. They say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where Jamshed glowed and drank deep, and Baram, that great hunter, the wild ass, stamps over his head and he lies fast asleep. I sometimes think that never blows so red. The rose is where some buried scissor bled that every hyacinth the garden wears, drop in its lap from someone's lovely head. And this delightful herb was tender green, fledges the river sleep on which we lean. Ah, lean upon it lightly, for who knows from what one's lovely lip it springs and seen. Ah, my beloved feel the cup that clears, today of past regrets the future fears. Tomorrow? Why? Tomorrow I may be, myself with yesterday, seven thousand years. Lo, some we loved the loveliest and the best, that time and fate of all their vintage pressed, have drunk their cup around or two before, and one by one crept silently to rest. And we that now make merry in their room, they left in summer dresses in the new bloom. Ourselves must we beneath the couch of earth, descend ourselves to make a couch for whom? Ah, make the most of what we yet may spend, before we too into the dust descend, dust into dust, and under dust to lie. Sun's wine, sun's song, sun's singer, and sun's end. Alike for those who for today prepare, and those that after tomorrow stare, a muzzin from the tower of darkness cries, Fools! Your reward is neither here nor there. Why? All the saints and sages who discussed of the two worlds so learnedly are thrust, like foolish prophets forth, their words to scorn are scattered and their mouth are stopped with dust. Oh, come with an old Kayam and leave the wise to talk. One thing is certain that life lies. One thing is certain, and the rest is lies. The flower that once has blown forever dies. Myself when young did eagerly frequent doctor and saint and heard great argument about it and about, but every more came out my the same door as in I went. With them the seed of wisdom did I saw, and with my own hand labored it did grow. And this was all the harvest that I reaped. I came like water and I like wind echo. Into this universe, and why not knowing? Nor whence, like water, willy nilly flowing, and out of it as wind along the way east, I know that pleasure sure willy nilly blowing. What, without asking, hither hurried whence, and without asking, whither hurried hence? Another and another cup to drone, the memory of this impertinence. Up from earth center through the seventh gate, I rose and on the throne of Saturn sate, 
and many nuts and revealed by the road, but not the nut of human death and fate. There was a door to which I found no key. There was a veil of past which I found not see. Some little talk a while of me and thee. There seemed, and then no more of thee and me. Then to the rolling heaven itself I cried, asking what lamp and had destiny to guide, her little children stumbling in the dark, and a blind understanding heaven replied. Then to the earthen bowl did I adjourn my lip, the secret well of life to learn, and lip to lip it murmured, while you live, drink, for once that you never shall return. I think the vessel that with figurative articulation answered once did it live, and merry make and cold lip I kissed, how many kisses might it make and give. For in the marketplace, one dusk of day, I watched the patter thumping his wet clay, and with its all obliterated tongue, it murmured, Gently, brother, gently, pray. Ah, fill the cup, what boots it to repeat, how time is slipping underneath our feet, and born tomorrow and dead yesterday. Why fret about them if today be sweet? One moment in the ordinary waste, one moment of the well life to taste. The stars are setting in the caravan, stars for the dawn of nothing. Oh, make it haste. How long, how long, indefinite pursuit of this and that endeavor and dispute. Better be merry with a fruitful grape than sudden after none or bitter fruit. You know, my friends, how long since in my house. For a new marriage I did make caress, divorced all barren reason from my bed, and took the daughter of the vine to spouse. For is and is not, though with a roll and line, and up and down without I could define, I, yet in all I only cared to know, was never deep in anything but wine. And lately by the tavern door agaped, came stealing through dusk an angel shape, bearing a vessel on his shoulder, and he bid me taste of it, and to us the grape, the grape that can, with logic absolute, the two and the seventy jarring sect, confute the subtle alchemist that the tries life's leaden metal into gold turns neat. The mighty Mahmud in the victorious lord, that all of misbelieving and black horde, of fears and sorrows that infest the soul, scatters and slays with his enchanted sword. But leave the wise to wrangle with me, the quarrel of the universe let be, and in some corner of the hubbub couch, make game of what which makes as much of thee. For in and out, above, about, below, tis nothing but a magic shadow show, Played in the back, so scandal in the sun, round which we pantom figures some and go. And if the wine you drink, the lip you press, end in nothing, all things end in yes, then fancy while thou art, thou art but what? Thou shalt be nothing, thou shalt not be less. While the rosy blows along the river brink, with old Kayam the ruby vintage drink, and when the angel with his darker droth draws up to thee, take that and do not shrink. Tease all the checkerboard of nights and days, the where destiny of with men for peace is place. Hither and thither moves, and mates the slays, and one by one back in the closet lays. The ball no question makes in eyes and nose. But to right or left, as strikes the player goes, and he that toss thee down into the field, he knows about it all, he knows, he knows. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on, nor all thy pity, nor wit, shall you it back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash out a word of it, and the inverted bowl, 
we call the sky, where under crawling copt we lived and die. Lift not thy hand to it for help, for it rolls importantly on as thou or I. With earth first clay they did the last man need, and then the last harvest sowed the seed. Yes, the first morning of the creation wrote, what the last dawn of reckoning shall read. I tell thee this, when, started from the goal, over the shoulders of the flaming foal, of heaven Parwen and Mashra, they flung in my precedent plot of dust and soul. The vine had struck of fiber, which about if clings my being, let the sun flout. Of my base metal may be filled a key that shall unlock the door he howls without. And this I know, whether one the true light, candle to love or wrath consume me quite, one glimpse of it within the tavern cloth, better than it in the temple lost outright. Oh, thou who didst Muffet fall with a gin, beset the road I was to wander in, thou wilt not with the presentation round, Amish me and impute my fall to sin? Oh, thou who man of baser earth did make, and who with Eden didst devise the snake, for all the sin wherewith the face of man is blackened man forgiveness give and take. Listen again, one evening at the close, or Ramazan, or it better moon arose, in that batter's shop I stood alone, with a clay population round in rows. And strange to tell, among the earthen lot, some could articulate while others not, and suddenly one more impatient cried, Who is the potter? Pray, and who the pot? Then said another, Surely not in vain, my substance from the common earth was to aid, that he who subtly wrought into shape should stamp me back to common earth again. Another said, Why, never be precious boy, would break a bowl from which he drank in joy, he shall that made the vessel in pure love, the fancy in a factor rage destroy. None answered this, but after silence spake, a vessel of more ungainly make, they sneer at me for leaning all alley. What did the hand then the potter shake? Said one, Fock of Chosarly Tapser tell, and daub his visage with the smoke of hell. They talk of some strict testing of us. Pish, his god of fellow, and to all, all be well. Then said another with a long drawn high, My clay with long oblivion is gone dry. But, fill with an old familiar juice, methinks I might recover by and by. So while the vessels one of my ones were speaking, one spied a little crescent all were seeking, and then they jogged each other, Brother, brother, hark to the potter's shoulder not a creaking. Ah, with the grape, fading my life provide, and wash my body whence the life has died, and in the wedding sheet of wine leaf wrapped, so bury me my some sweet garden side. That even my buried ashes such as near of perfume shall fling up into the air, as not a true believer passing by, but shall be obtaken, overtaken unaware. Indeed, the idols I have loved so long, have done my credit in men's eyes much wrong, have drawn my honor in a shallow cup, and sold my reputation for a song. Indeed, indeed, repentance of before. I saw, but I was sober where I swore, and then, and then came spring and rose in hand, my threadbare penitence, a piece of store. And much as wine has played the infidel, and robbed me at my robe of honor, while I often wonder what the venters buy, one half so precious as the goods they hell sell, alas that spring should vanish with a rose. That youth's sweet-scented manuscripts should close, 
the nightingale that in the branches sang. Ah, hands of the wither flown again, who knows? Ah, love, could you and I with fate conspire to grasp the sorry scheme of things entire? Would not we shatter to it bits and then remold it never to the hearth desire? Ah, moon of the my delight, who knows no wane? The moon of heaven is rising once again. How oft hereafter rising shall she look through the same garden after me in vain? And then thy salves with shining foot shall pass among the guests star scattered on the grass, and in thy joyous errand reach the spot where I made one turn down an empty glass. So next is the dramatic situation. Who is the speaker of the poem? The speaker of the poem is an unknown person, and the poem has been narrated from the first person point of view, and the thought of Omar Khayyam has been compiled in the poem. So, to whom does the speaker speaking? The speaker speaking is that for all Iranian people. So, what is the situation? The poet experience spiritual states. The poem is high divine and spiritual meaning. The beauty and simplicity of this poem is so immaculate that people of all faith and those who have no faith can at all can seek divine solace in it. So next is the mood of the poem. So the mood of the poem is, it is a celebration of pleasures in every moment. So we must cherish every moment and enjoy our lives. Next is, what does every stanza convey? So for the quatrain number one, in the first quatrain, the speaker describes in the morning of new day, urging the reader to wake, the rising sun scatters, the stars and floods the castle of the sultan, a ruler in a Muslim country. And for the quatrain too, in the early false morning, the speaker hears a voice from the tavern, and the voice asks why a tired worshipper remains outside when the temple is prepared within the tavern. Next is, a group of people standing outside the tavern call for someone to open the door. They can only stay for a little while and can't return once they lived. Quatrain 4 The new year renews all desires. The speaker says that his soul rests in thoughtful solitude where the religious leader Jesus' breath and the white hand of Moses emerged. For the Quatrain 5, Iram, a mythological garden city, along with the seven range cap of Jamshed, a mythological king of ancient Persia, but there are still gardens by the water and rubbish of the vine. Next is the quatrain number six. David, the biblical king and pessimist, is silent. A nightingale cries to a rose for wine in Pallavi, an Iranian language. The nightingale's cry turns the rose pink and red or incarnadine. For the Quatrain 7, it conveys that the speaker invites the reader to welcome spring by throwing off their winter repentance garments and filling a cup. He adds the bird of time will only flutter for a little while. And for the Quatrain 8, it conveys that both of the wine of life and the leaves of life are disappearing little by little. They will go whether the speaker is in Nishapur or Babylon, two cities in the Middle East, and whether the cup has sweet or bitter liquid. For the Quatrain 9, though each morning brings a thousand new roses, the rose of yesterday disappears. So the first summer month bringing rose also takes away Jamshid and Kaikobad, two legendary Persian kings. For the Quatrain number 10, the speaker 
invites the changing season to take Kaikobad and his grandson Kaikoshiru. He urges that the reader to ignore the boasting of Zal and Drastam, who heroes who is the two heroes of Persian mythology and the call of Hatim, a pre Islamic poet. Next is the Quatrain 11. It conveys that the speaker is on a stretch of land dividing the desert from the gardens and fields. Here the names of rich and poor are forgotten. The final line wishes peace to the Mahmud and an Iranian sultan or ruler. And for the Quatrain 12, it conveys that Addressing a companion, the speaker describes his contentment. They are in the wilderness with wine, bread, and a book of poems. The speaker's companion is singing, Wilderness seems like paradise to the speaker. Next is, the some people love the present world, the speaker says. Others long for eternal paradise promised by the prophet. The speaker tells the reader to take the cash and let the credit go and to ignore the beating of the drum in the distance. For the Quatrain 14, it conveys that the speaker po points out how the rose blows through the world laughing. She tears the tassel of her purpose, her purse and throws its treasure unto the garden. For the Quatrain Tray number 15, both those who grow grain and those who fling grain to the winds will return to dust, not to the oret or golden earth men want to dig up again. Next is, for the Quatrain 16, it conveys that human's worldly hopes turn to ashes. Even when the hopes are granted, they disappear quickly like snow in the desert. Quatrain 17, in Caravansary, which is an inn for travelers in the desert, the doorways alternate between the day and night. The speaker pictures many sultans who stayed briefly at the inns before leaving. For the Quatrain 18, it conveys that lions and lizards are now in charge of the courts of the fabled Persian king. Jamshed. Bahram, a Persian king who hunted wild donkeys in life, now sleeps while wild donkeys stomp over his head. For the Quatrain 19, the speaker thinks that reddest blow, rose blows where some birds are bled. Hyacinth worn by the garden, persona, personified as a female, dropped formerly lovely heads. And for the Quatrain 20, it conveys that it encouraging the listener to lean gently on the green herbs at the edge of the river. The speaker says, no one knows what unseen, one's lovely lip, the rivers comes from. So next is the Quatrain 21. It conveys that the speaker invites his beloved to fill the cup that erases their worries about the past and future. He spe speculates tomorrow he will himself be a part of the past, yesterday's 7,000 years. And for the Quatrain 22, it conveys that many of the people he and his companion loved most, the speaker says, have recently drunk their own cup and gone to rest. Quatrain 23, the speaker and his companions are enjoying the summer in the room of others, left behind. Yet, they too must descend beneath the couch of earth and become a couch for others. For the Quatrain 24, it conveys that the speaker urges his companions and readers to make the most of life before they too descend into dust, without wine, song, singer or end next is the quatrain 25 
Amazon, an Islamic official who makes the call to daily prayer cries from the Tower of Darkness to those preparing for today and longing for tomorrow. He tells them their reward is in neither place. Next is the Katrain 26. It conveys that both the wise and the holy who discussed their two worlds have their head their words scattered and their mouth stopped with dust. The Katrain 27, when the speaker was young, he listened eagerly to the both doctors and saints, but he always left by the same door he entered. So for the Katrain 28, comparing wisdom to a, sen to a seed, a speaker describes that sowing the seed with his teachers and tending it on his own, Yet his only harvest was the knowledge he came into the world like water and will live like wind. For the Quatrain 29, it conveys that the speaker describes entering the universe like water and living like wind. He doesn't know why he's here where he's. He came from or where withers he's going. And for the Katrin 30, the speaker asked that came her without permission. Hence, it came and whether it went from here, he hopes many cups of forbidden wine will erase the memory of that insolence. Next is the Katrin 31. It conveys that after rising from the center of the earth through the seventh gate, the speaker imagines himself arriving at Saturn's throne. On his journey, he unveiled many knots, but not the master, not the human fate. And for the Katrain 32, it conveys that the speaker recalls a door with no key and a veil of couldn't see through. There was briefly talk of me and thee before those presences ceased to exist. For the Katrain 33, it conveys that earth, the seas, and heaven are unable to answer the speaker questions. The purple seas mourn their lord, lord forlorn. Heaven signs are revealed or hidden by night and morning. For the Katrain 34, the speaker seeks a lamp to light the darkness, hoping to find the thee in me behind the veil. He hears a voice from outside in calling, the me within the blind. Quatrain 35, leaning into a urn or drinking vessel, the speaker hopes to learn the secret of his life. The urn tells him to drink since he can never return after his death. And for the Quatrain 36, it conveys that the speaker imagines the vessel itself once lived and drunk. He thinks of all the kisses like his it might take and how many might give. For the Quatrain 37, the speaker recalls watching a potter shape his clay and hearing the clay murmur to the potter to be gentle. And for the Quatrain 28, the potter and his clay resemble the story of mankind being molded from clods of earth into human forms by the maker. Quatrain 39, each drop humans throw from their cups for earth to drink of may quench the fire of anguish in an eye hidden beneath the earth long ago. So for the Quatrain 40, it conveys that the speaker counsels an unknown companion, possibly the reader, to look up to the heaven as the tulip looks from the soil for sunlight. Eventually, the reader will be inverted like an empty cup to earth. And for the Quatrain 41, it conveys that the speaker invites the reader to leave earthly or heavenly concerns about the future to the winds instead they should loose fingers and the hair of the minister of wine and for the quatrain 42 it conveys that the wine of the reader drinks and the vessel they drink from well and death as everything begins 
the end, and the speaker advises that the reader to remember they are the same today as yesterday and will be still be the same tomorrow. Next is the quatrain 43. The reader will not hesitate when the angel of the dark drink finds them by the river and offers his cup, urging their soul forward to their lips. For the quatrain 44, it conveys that if the soul can escape the dust and ride the air of heaven, the speaker asks couldn't be the shame to stay, crippled in the clay carcass on, of an earthly body. Next is the quatrain 45. It conveys that the speaker compares earthly life to a tent where a sultan stays for a day on his journey to the realm of death. When the sultan leaves, the dark, fairish or servant prepares the tent for the next guest. Next is the quatrain 46. The reader advises the speaker not to worry that their death will be deprived existence of something unique. An eternal sake or wine pourer has poured and will pour millions of bubbles like them. And for the quatrain 47, it conveys that once a speaker and reader die, the world will go on for a long, long while. It will think that no more of their birth and death than the sea thinks of a pebble thrown into it. Next is the quatrain 48. The speaker describes a phantom caravan stopping on its journey through wasteland for a brief taste of being from a well. The caravan has reached the place where it began. Described as the nothing, the speaker urges haste. And for the quatrain 49, the speaker asks if the reader would spend their brief existence learning. The secret. The speaker must decide quickly as only a hair divides the false from true. He asks what the reader believes life depends on. And for the quatrain number 50, it conveys that a hair may separate the false and true. And if the reader can find it, a single alif, the first letter in the Arabic alphabet, may be the clue and to the treasure house and perhaps to the master. And for the next quatrain, number 51, it conveys that the master's presence runs through the veins of creation like mercury taking a variety of shapes from ma to mummy, from moon to fish. All the shapes change and die, yet the master remains. For the quatrain 52, it conveys that after a guest, a moment a person disappears into darkness behind the curtain. Meanwhile, the eternal drama continues, both created and watched by the master. And for the quatrain 53, the reader may spend today when they are themselves gazing up at heavens, an opening door in vain. If they do, the speaker ask, what? will they to do tomorrow and will they no longer themselves. And for the quatrain 54, it conveys that the speaker urges the reader not to waste time on pointless efforts or arguments. They should enjoy the fruitful grape rather than pinning after none or bitter fruit. For the quatrain number 55, it conveys that the speaker describes how he entered a second marriage divorcing reason and marrying the daughter of the vine instead. Quatrain 56 conveys that the speaker can define terms like is and is not and up and down using a logic. Still, he never deeply understood anything but the wine. So, for the Quatrain 57, it conveys that the speaker resists the idea that his calculations give him a better understanding of how to compute a year. Instead, he says that he only removes from the calendar the dead yesterday and the unborn tomorrow. 
for the quatrain 58, it conveys that an angel enters through an, the open tavern door at dusk car carrying a vessel of wine. He has the speaker to taste. And for the quatrain 59, wine which the speaker calls the grape can provide the 72 quarreling religions wrong with logic. Wine is the alchemist who turns the lid of life into gold. And for the Katrin 60, the speaker compares the wine and its power to Mahmud, a powerful Persian ruler. It's the fears of the sorrows of the soul scattered before Mahmud's whirlwind sword. And next is the denotation and connotation. So for the wine, the denotation is that of the alcoholic fermented juice of fresh grapes used as a beverage and for the connotation it is used for enlightenment and the water for life and for the box a container with a flat base and sides so in the poem box it connotates a phantoms and shadow show the denotation of shadow show is that a drama exhibited by throwing shadows of puppets or actors on a screen. And as a connotation, it is the reflection of God in the universe. So next is the God. The God denotes the creator of the universe and the source of moral authority and the source of moral. It is the creator of the universe and the source of moral authority. And for the connotation, it is the pottery maker. And for the faith, it is the dist it denotes distant to happen. And for in the poem, faith means helplessness against forces beyond the control of a man. And for the love, it denotes an intense feeling of deep affection. In the poem, it is a vast devotion to God. And for the symbolism, so the rubaiyat is rich with symbolism. Many plants and objects are personified, given human characteristics and lives of dialogue. Some symbols show the influence of Sufism. So, wine is symbolizes indulgent earthly pleasures and the wisdom found in enjoying them. So, in the Rubaiyat, the wine drinkers approach a similar joyful state, but they are seeking the divinity and sacredness in the early life. Next is the patterns, patterns and vessels. So, patterns and their clay vessels symbolize a divine creator and human beings. And for the rose, the rose symbolizes nature nature's beauty which will inevitably fade and the last is the nightingale nightingale which is so called because it sings in the pre-dawn hours of the night stands for human soul birds often symbolize souls in the sophie mysticism next is the figures of speech the met metaphor. The metaphor of Bax has been used for this world and the humans have been metamorphic metaphorically described as phantoms which are constantly born and die. Another is the metaphor of shadow show has been used for the reflection of God in the in this universe. Next is the creation of man has been metaphorically demonstrated by the pottery shop and the metaphor of pot has been used for the human beings who are made by the pottery maker, the god. Another is a person who gets indulged in recognizing the divine has been described through the metaphor of a drunkard. The drunkard becomes oblivious of his past and future and lives in the present moment. The metaphor of wine has been used for enlightenment. Another is the alliteration. The examples of alliteration are tomorrow. Why tomorrow? Myself with yesterday. About it and about but evermore the magic show.
shadow show. So, there are repetitions of T, M, R, W, Y, S, B, and T, and the S sounds, respectively. Next is the assonance. The examples of assonance are myself with yesterday, 7,000 years. Myself when young, did eagerly frequent tomorrow. Why tomorrow? Heard great argument about it and about, and for in and out, above, about, below. So there are repetitions of the E, U, O, the A, and E. And for the irony, the irony in the poem is that the intellectuals think that they can product about the past or future, but their discussions are futile. Another is that the irony people believe that they can change their fates through their intellect of or wisdom, but the poet says that it is something which cannot be uttered. And for the fate, fate has been written by God and we cannot change it even with our tears, so it is useless to challenge our fate. And next is the personification. The fate, life, death, Pots and wine, shadow, and the world has been personified in the poem. Next is the hyperbole. The hyperbole has been used to narrate the benefits of wine. The narrator says that it can give access to the divine and it makes a person oblivious of his past and present and confines himself to his present. And for the theme. The theme is a carpe diem or seize the day. So, as what I've understood in the poem is that we must cherish every moment and enjoy our lives while we're still alive. And for the implication of the title, it implies spiritual meaning. So, Omar Khayyam dwell on some of the personal problems that can be set in mind of, of a man. And he speaks uh, about God and human mortality that about also the time of its action in life. So that would be all. Thank you.